So interest rates are all over the news right now, and the Fed is crashing the party. Rates hikes are now pretty much a certainty, as if for some reason the market didn't think they were going to happen before. I mean, come on. But I have news for permabills out there, as well as for all of those forecasting a crash right now. Interest rate hike cycles are nothing new. They usually take three or four years to complete. And the good news is that every interest rate hike cycle in the last 30 years has corresponded in a strong bull market in tow. That's right. Markets have rallied every single time. So stick with me as I bring up the facts. The first hike cycle I want to focus on took place between 93 and 1999. In late 93, following a recession in 1990 and a recovery period, the federal funds rate was sitting on or near the 3% mark. And in 1994, the Fed started to raise rates with increases occurring steadily until a peak in June 2000 at about 6.8%. There was a bit of a wobble in policy here in late 1998. Rates were cut off the back of the emerging market crisis, but inflation targeting was still the order of the day, and the US inflation was at a point where the Fed saw a need to raise again here in 1999. So as the Fed started hiking, what did the markets do? Boom! a monster rally in the Nasdaq spanning six years, culminating in one of the greatest bubbles of the 20th century, the dot-com bubble. So just to be clear, the dot-com bubble happened even while interest rates had risen 3.8% over six years. Sure, it wobbled a bit in early 1994 when the Nasdaq shaved 10% off its highs. This is when the first rates increases were posted, but this did not last long. The S&P was similar. It also dropped 10% in 1994 during the frothy period around the original rates hikes. But just like the NASDAQ, it rallied like mad thereafter. We can consider the emerging market crisis as a bit of a bear market, but it lasted less than a year, and the subsequent rally came after the Fed hiked the rates in 1999. During the dot-com crash, the Fed did what the Fed does best, used monetary policy to stimulate the economy and dramatically cut rates all the way from 6.8% to 1% in 2003. Once unemployment started to drop, the Fed started to raise rates again 17 times in a row for a total of 4.2% in increases over a three-year period. And the market's response? Well, the Nasdaq shaved off about 15% in 2004, but went on to rally almost 100% by 2007. It certainly wasn't plain sailing, not like the 94 to 99 period, but still a big rally. The S&P 500 fared similarly. It rallied 37%. Now this is telling. 30% for value stocks versus 90% for growth stocks in an interest rate increase. Now let's look at the big one. The Great Recession. Interest rates were cut dramatically, all the way down to around the 0.1% mark, where they stayed for the better part of six years. The first interest rate hike came in December 14, 2015, and the market did not even blink. In reality, we had had a 15% pullback in August, which happened as a result of the Fed signaling its intention. But by the time the actual hike came, nada. Now in January 2016, we witnessed the first bear market since the Great Recession. But it is not as a result of interest rates. The 10-year Treasury yields were dropping like a stone. This was the market stressing over after effects of the Greek crisis, the oil price collapse, and typical bearishness in the news, but it was very short-lived. The Nasdaq behaved the same. It grew 100% over that time period, and the S&P 500 grew 80%. Note the wobble in September 2018. This bear market happened because a US president tried to intervene in the Fed's interest rate cycle. Just think about that for a second. The market plummeted because Donald Trump tried to stop interest rate hikes. So let's fast forward to today. The Fed has indicated they will raise rates. What does this mean for the markets? Well, we can already put the S&P 500 down for a 6% top to bottom retracement. And we can put the NASDAQ down for a similar 8% retracement. So there's a bit more room to retrace here if past reactions are anything to gauge by. The traders will talk of a phenomenon known as a kangaroo tail otherwise known as an exhaustion move. This is an indication of price rejection on the downturn and is a very bullish indicator. It would seem that we are done with selling for now. 
Of course, another trading phenomenon is the principle of a Hounds of Basketball trade, coined by Dr. Alexander Elder. The famous Sherlock Holmes story had a pivotal moment where Sherlock Holmes was able to deduce that the murderer was known to the family dog because the dog didn't bark when the crime was committed. In trading terms, when an indicator like a kangaroo tail doesn't work, in other words, if the market doesn't bark like it's supposed to, then this is a powerful signal that more pain is to follow. So what does get impacted by interest rate hikes? Well, some would argue that highly geared companies will feel the pain. And sure, they most likely would. But a highly leveraged company will feel pain irrespective of the interest rate hike. They have bills to pay. And increasing their debt repayment by 1% or 2%, well, let's just say that if this is all it takes to break the bank with the company you're invested in, then it's a pretty fragile company to start with. The second argument is that the discounted cash flow versus increased risk-free rate encourages lightening of positions. So future cash flow is now worth less because the risk-free rate, bonds, has now gone up. Well, this argument is somewhat ridiculous in my opinion. Moving the needle on hurdle rates by 1% or 2% cannot possibly change how long-term growth stock investors view their investments. I mean, they already expect a 10 or 20% return. I fail to see how this will motivate a change of heart in the discounted cash flow models. So how about options then? There is a lot of leverage out there. But call options actually benefit from interest rate hikes. Their price goes up. Put options, on the other hand, drop in value. So maybe put option short sellers might be inclined to lighten their positions. But this will cause prices to go up. And then there are the margin traders who now have increased interest rate payments on their margin loans. But margin traders are typically short-term traders, so they are in any case looking for far bigger payouts in their positions and will likely treat the interest rate hike as negligible. So in conclusion, what am I saying here? That interest rate hikes will cause a market rally? No, there is no cause and effect implied here. We cannot say interest rate hikes caused the previous rallies. But what we can say is that there is sufficient evidence to disprove the notion that interest rate hikes cause market declines. This is categorically not true, as all previous interest rate hikes testify to. So whatever you believe the market is going to do, if you are bullish like Jamie Dimon, or bearish like Ray Dalio or Michael Burry, or bullish in some stocks and bearish in others like Kathy Wood, whatever your theory, interest rate hikes should not form part of your thesis. If you like this video, please hit the like button and say subscribe to my channel. Thank you for listening.